Welcome back. Gary James had a knack for finding talented people and letting them tell their story. In 1984, Gary introduced us to John Jackson. A man who had seen two world wars, Jackson returned home to follow in his father's footsteps with his roots firmly planted in the East Texas town of Punkin. Father, he made chairs, beer wagon wheels, axe handles, and all such as that. He, he was the master of it. I start off with eight. I lay them down like I have now. I tie them down. Then I put eight more on there. That makes a full bottom. And uh, when it make a full bottom, then I turn it up for the, to make my setup on it. And I bend them over on the bottom, and then I have to let it set a while. And let it set a while, and I run it up. I have some in California, Dallas, Fort Worth, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and different parts. Everyone just got to be right, like uh, mathematics, when you're going to school. Got to be right, don't it be wrong, all the way. Those have got to be tied down. It, it looks funny. It's a true statement when you get it correct. Jackson made his first basket when he was seven years old. His father taught him how to make one, but he didn't take the job seriously until after he was 50 and disabled as a logger in the East Texas Piney Woods. Now he is in his 90s, and basket making is about all that is left for him. The years are slowly catching up. His family is gone, but whenever he's able, Jackson can still weave baskets out of white oak branches the way his father did and his grandfather before him. In the mid-1800s, these baskets were in use all over the South to pick cotton. Cotton picking is mechanized now, but Jackson's baskets are still in demand as works of art. He still makes them from scratch. He cuts the white oak, strips the branches, and weaves the baskets. When his health is good, he can turn out one basket a day. And that's pretty good when you see what all goes into the project. And all the time he's working, he's talking about his life, his land, his family. He is a grand old man born in the Piney Woods and destined to die there and deserving of going down in Texas history. How do you account for your good health? Well, I take a little medicine along and sometimes wake my stomach up. Sometimes I take sick and I have to go to the hospital, you know, and uh, learn treating me some. But a doctor said, uh, my insides was mighty good for the age I am. How did you wind up uh, in Pumpkin? Sir. How did you wind up in this part of the country? I was born here. Oh, you were born? I was born on this place oh, you were. and raised on this place, right down there. My mother was 106 years old when she died. What about your father? We never did get his age. He couldn't read and write. And uh, 
and it never kept up with his age. But he was old. We don't know how Gary managed to find John, nor the town of Pumpkin, for that matter. When that story aired more than 25 years ago, John was already in his 90s. So we're going to have to assume that John is now making baskets in the great beyond. Coming up next, the beautiful waves of grasslands. There is more Eyes of Texas in just a moment.